infrastructure as code, DevOps, net DevOps, buzzwords everywhere, right? What does all of this really mean? They're important buzzwords. They're important phrases nonetheless. But what do we mean by infrastructure as code in the first place? Well, it is what it sounds like, but it's also not what it sounds like. Let me explain that for a second. We'll start with the basics, the most obvious things, infrastructure as code, meaning that rather than configuring the physical device itself or virtual device itself on some sort of interactive command line or GUI, our systems or networks are deployed from codes and scripts like Python or PowerShell. So if you're spinning up a new VM and it has to have a certain operating system installed on it and it has to have certain services or roles installed in it. It needs to exist on a certain network with a certain VLAN tag. All of these things can be scripted now. So whether we're deploying virtual machines or network, whatever the case is, it's coming from some sort of script and code. And this kind of begs the question, doesn't it? Why? Why after decades of the command line or Windows Server's server manager, why go to code? Like anything in IT, something new is created to solve a problem. And the problem that we're faced with not terribly long ago was that developers and infrastructure teams weren't on the same page, like ever. In fact, let let me clear the screen so I can explain what I mean by that. So infrastructure, we've got, you know, our server. Let's pretend this is a web server. We're serving a web-based application on it. So I'm going to write web server here. And on this above it, we'll put the little web server page. We got a web app. So this web app is code, right? Developers are working on this web page here. And the infrastructure or operations team work on this server here. You can already see there's a disconnect between these two teams. And a lot of times developers need test environments to work on their stuff too. So What a developer may do in this case is developers working on adding a new button to this website. We'll call this developer developer A. That's going to be developer A's name. He's going to build a new button for this website. So he'll take a copy of the web page and he'll also ask for a copy of the web server to be spun up. So a new VM, a test web server is spun up here and he's got a copy of the web page over here too. This is his test environment right there. But then developer B comes along down here, and he's working on a completely different section of the website. So he's got a copy of the website over here, and then he asks for a separate environment to be spun up for his work. So he's got a different web server over here. Do you see already what's about to happen here? This is our production stuff over here, but now we have two separate dev or test environments, and almost immediately they can become out of sync. If we deployed a patch to this particular server here, how does this web server here and this web server here get that patch? Well, by default, the operations team has to manually remember to go update each of these web servers individually. And then what happens if developer B changes the web server? Maybe he installs an updated version of web deploy for Microsoft IIS. Eventually, he'll get done with his changes to both the web server and the web code, and he'll move that back into production, but developer A doesn't get that feature, and he tries to move his code in, and all of a sudden, there's a conflict, there's a clash, and the application goes down. This is a really, really small example of what's going on. Here's what I want you to picture now. Let me clear the screen. Major websites, Newegg, Amazon. There's a whole lot of moving parts here, right? So there's probably a bunch of development teams that are working on this all concurrently, and maybe they all have their own separate environments. If we're manually spinning up test environments, manually spinning up servers, how are we maintaining all of those different instances and servers? The idea behind infrastructure as code in CI, CD, or continuous integration and continuous deployment is... The the idea behind DevOps. We're talking about integrating our development efforts and our operations efforts into one cohesive environment. So with infrastructure as code, we now have one base level of production 
that we say this is how the infrastructure works right now. This is it. This is the statement of authority. This is, this code is our infrastructure. And one of the, the key phrases that I hear a lot is deploying infrastructure from code is like deploying infrastructure from documentation. So now when I have this environment spun up and this environment spun up and this environment spun up, we know that all of these environments can be spun up quickly and reliably on the same version because they all came from the same code. And when things are changed, they have to be checked back in, approved, and tested in that code. And as they're checked into this code, then the other environments get updated too. What we're outlining here is the CICD pipeline, and we're going to talk about the CICD pipeline a little bit more in the next nugget, but the key that you need to understand, one of the big principles, infrastructure as code isn't just talking about deploying infrastructure from code. We're actually talking about a business process. We're talking about a business culture, and that's what DevOps is. How does this all come into play with networking and Ansible? Ansible is the base code automator and orchestrator. Ansible is what deploys all of your infrastructure from the base code. And Ansible checks in and verifies that the code is being maintained in its desired state. So when we're deploying copies of our network infrastructure for new development teams or app teams or new production environments, we're maintaining that that network behaves the way the code says it behaves. It's exciting, right? So that's the principle behind infrastructure as code, how the CI CD pipeline actually works, how people actually keep their code maintained from a centralized repository. We're going to talk about that in the next nugget. In the meantime, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.